I am Gopal Krishna Ranjan. Welcome to my course Unfolding Set Based Approach. Till now, we have gone through the SQL Server architecture and working up joins. Also, we have created a tally table in previous chapter and here is the first example generate rows dynamically. In this example, we are going to learn how we can generate rows dynamically for each record of a table in set based approach and how to do calculations on each row of a table generated dynamically. Let's understand the table data and the required output. Suppose company SQL release provides employee friendly loans to its employees with simple repayment options. The loan detail data is stored in a table named employee loan detail, which has columns EMP ID, EMP name, address, loan amount, repayment tenure in month and repayment start date, where EMP ID stores employee unique identification number. EMP name stores employee full name, address stores address of the employee, loan amount is the total loan amount given to the employee, repayment tenure in month is the total number of repayment installments in months and repayment start date stores date from which loan repayment will start. Also we have few sample records in this table. Now for each employee we need to generate as much rows as given in repayment tenure in month column by breaking the total loan amount in equal amounts for each installment. However, the last installment should bring down the closing balance to zero. The repayment date should be started from the date given in the repayment start date column and repeated on the first day of each month till the loan amount becomes zero. Let's consider first row for example. In this row, we have three as value in repayment tenure in month column. So for this row, we need to generate three rows by dividing the loan amount in three installments starting from the date given in the repayment start date column. In this way, the first repayment amount and date will be 33,333 and 1st Feb 2016. Second repayment amount and date will be 33,333 and 1st March 2016. And third repayment amount and date will be 33,334 and 1st April 2016. So if we talk about the final output for first row of employee loan detail table, we will have three rows like this. In this output, we have installment amount, installment date and remaining balance columns along with EMP ID, EMP name and address columns. Like first row, same process needs to be repeated for each row of employee loan detail table. Now that we have understood the requirement, let's discuss how we can write a SQL query in set best approach to get this output. This is the input data from which we have to get the required output. First of all, we have to think how we can dynamically generate as much rows as given in repayment tenure in month column. We know that the join multiplies the records of one table with another table based on the given join predicate. It means to expand the rows of employee loan detail table, we need to join this table with another table. Let's say we have a table, table X with a column call one. Now if we could have been able to join the first record of employee loan detail table with three rows of table X and second row with five rows of table X and third row with six rows of table X and fourth row with eight rows of table X, then for each row of employee loan detail table, we will be able to generate the specified number of rows given in repayment tenure in month column. So what is table X? A single column table with some sequential numbers which is none other than our tally table which we have created earlier in this tutorial. You can watch the tally table chapter if you have not watched that video. Now to expand the rows of employee loan detail table, we write this select statement which joins employee loan detail table and tally table and extracts all columns from both tables. Since we need to extract only matching records from both the tables, we are using inner join here. What should be the join predicate now? Here it is. This join predicate restricts the multiplication of rows of employee loan detail table to only those records of tally table whose values are less or equal to the value of repayment tenure in month column. This query will generate a result set like this. Here we can see 
all columns from employee loan detail table as well as from tally table are present in the result set. In order to make it simple, we have considered only first row of employee loan detail table in the output. Similarly, each row of employee loan detail table will be instantiated with as much rows of tally table as given in repayment tenure in month column. This is the query and its result set. Now we need to generate this output. In this result set, EMP ID, EMP name and address columns have been generated already. However, installment amount, installment date and remaining balance output columns are still needs to be calculated from loan amount, repayment tenure in month and repayment start date columns of the result set. Let's calculate installment amount first. To get the installment amount, we need to divide the loan amount by repayment tenure in month and then extract the integer part from the output value. We can use floor function to get the largest integer from a numeric value in TSQL. This calculation can be used to compute the installment amount for all rows except the last installment. As in the last installment, we need to bring down the loan amount to zero. For this, we would need to sum up all the previous installments and then subtract the sum from the total loan amount. To implement this, instead of using a subquery or a windows function, we are going to do some reverse engineering here. We know that the value of each installment has been calculated by dividing the loan amount by repayment tenure in month and then taking the integer part from there. So if you multiply this integer part with n minus 1 where n is the total number of installments being paid by the employee, we can find the total amount paid before the last installment. Finally, we can subtract this sum from the total loan amount to adjust any differences which might have occurred due to the decimal value truncation. This calculation can be used for last installment row. As we need to do this adjustment in the last installment row only, firstly we need to identify the last installment. We can see that in case of the last installment row, for each employee the value in column repayment tenure in month becomes equal to the value in column M. Now we have to calculate the installment amount conditionally for last installment row and for other installment rows. For this we can use a case expression as this to compute the installment amount conditionally. In this case expression, when the value of column n becomes equal to the value of column repayment tenure in month which indicates the last installment row, we have used this calculation, otherwise we have used this calculation. After adding this case expression in the query, it will be as this. Next, we will add the installment date in the output. This is the query and its result set. Our required output is this. Let's add installment date column in the result set now. We know that the installment date should be started from the repayment start date and repeated on the first day of each month till the loan amount becomes zero. In the output, the value in first row of column installment date is 1st Feb 2016. In second row is 1st March 2016 and in third row is 1st March 2016. We can see that the value of each row is increasing by one month. Now, in the result set, we can see that the value of repayment start date gets repeated with each row of the tally table. Also, as like installment date column of the output, the value of column n in the result set is increasing by number 1 in each row. Let's have these columns together to understand the calculation. This is repayment start date, this is n and this is the required output column. Now, if we add the value of column n to the month part of the repayment start date column, we can get this date value. Here we can see that the date values generated after adding n in the month part of the repayment start date are a month after the required one. So instead of n, if we add n minus 1 in the repayment start date column, we will have this as the outcome, which is same as the required output. We can use this statement to implement this calculation in T-SQL. Here we are using date add function to add the value of n minus 1 to the month part of the repayment start date column. We have also used convert function to convert the date time in DD MMM YYYY format. After adding this statement to the query, it will look like this. Let's add remaining balance column in the result set now. This is the query and its result set. Our required output is this. 
let's add remaining balance column in the result set now in the remaining balance column we can see that in the first row the value of installment amount gets subtracted from the loan amount in second row the value of first and second installments have been subtracted from the loan amount in third row the value of first second and third installments have been subtracted from the loan amount it means to get the remaining balance, we have to subtract the current and the all previously paid installments from the loan amount. Let's calculate the installments paid till the current row and subtract it from the loan amount. We know that to calculate the installment amount, we have divided the loan amount by repayment tenure in months and then extracted the integer part from the output. So if we multiply the installment amount with column N, we will be able to get the sum of total installments paid till the date. Let's have these columns together to understand this. This is the installment amount and this is N. If we multiply installment amount with N, we will get this outcome. Our loan amount is this. Now, if we subtract the multiplied outcome from the loan amount, we will get this output. However, our required output is this. Here we can see that the calculation of remaining balance for all the rows are correct except the last one. Because in the last row, to bring down the loan amount to zero, we have adjusted the differences which might have occurred due to the decimal value truncation. As we have already adjusted the differences which brings down the remaining balance to zero in the last row, we can put zero as remaining balance value. We can use this case expression to conditionally compute the remaining balance amount for last row and for other rows. In this case expression, we have used zero as a value in case of last row and in case of other rows, we have used the above formula to compute the remaining balance amount. After adding this case expression in query, it will be as this. Finally, let's remove the extra columns from the result set. This is the query and its result set. Our required output is this. Let's remove the extra columns from the result set now. We can see that EMP ID, EMP name and address columns are required in the output along with installment amount, installment date and remaining balance columns. So in our final query, we have selected only these columns which are required in the output. Let's have a quick demo of this example in SQL Server. Start using set based approach database here. Create the table employee loan detail. Insert few records in the table now. And here is the query which we have created to get the required output. Let's run the query and here is the output. Also, if you want to have hands-on experience with the examples that we have covered here, you can download the scripts from our website's URL given in the description. Please share your valuable inputs. Based on your inputs, I will prepare the next video. Thank you for watching this video.